Hey, big family, it's Jonathan. We're here with the soundstage backstage at the MasterCard Arena in Ukasong with the Pet Shop Boys, Neil and Chris. Thanks Hello. for joining us, and welcome to Beijing. Nice to be here. You could have dressed up a bit, though, couldn't you? I mean, look, oh, you, I can see your knees. I didn't, I didn't want to, you know, <laughs> overdress you guys, so I'm not trying to downplay it. But I did have this here. Oh, I wonder, who knew what that was? Maybe just put it there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I understand that it's your first time to come to China. It's our first public art. We actually came to China a couple of years ago and we did a oh, show did at the Museum of Modern Art okay. for um, the fashion company Prada. Um, we did like a, a half hour show for them. But this is our first um, public concert. So have you spent any time in China where you're, you're not performing or on the road? Have you had time to travel at all? Um, well, yesterday we got the high speed train from Shanghai to um, Beijing, which okay. was quite impressive. Yeah, and on the previous visit we did the usual, you know, Forbidden City, Great Wall Great of China, Wall, the Bird's Nest, and we found a bit of the old sort of town as well, got a feel for old China, which was good. You know, traveling in general, but especially it happens to be in China, people have a very different perception of what it is before you arrive, and then after, usually people think, wow, this is completely different. You know, what were your impressions of China after coming? Um, well, it's quite interesting because it was it was it wasn't isn't as surprising as I thought it was going to be um, I mean we've traveled around the region quite a lot um, and Asia, are, Asia or, yeah you know um, and, and so there are similarities you know with Hong Kong and Singapore and Japan um, there are there are definite similarities particularly the climate um, Everyone always seems to work very hard, you know, unlike we lazy British. Um, and um, so you can see similarities across the region. And what uh, were you expected to be surprised by? Well, what, the most important thing for us, because just two nights ago we played our first ever concert, uh, a public concert in China. And, you know, in a lot of the world, like in America, the Pet Shop Boys were most famous in the 80s. Um, in China, they didn't used to play pop music on the radio in the 80s. So we wondered whether people would know the music, would want to come and see us, um, and what the reaction would be like. We were delighted that we got an amazing reaction in Shanghai, and the, the audience was uh, really up for it and very excited and vocal. And um, it, was, it was a fantastic audience, a great concert. And that's what we're here for. So what, what was the uh, initial inspiration to come to China as, uh, as part of your tour? Oh, well, we were, <laughs> I don't know, we asked the tour manager. <laughs> we were asked, yeah, we were asked. Okay, so you were like invited and then... Yeah, uh, we were, do we're doing a world tour, mm -hmm. you know, and it's great that, um, it's an interesting tour this because we're doing some countries for the first time, China, Philippines, Indonesia. I mean, an amazing thing about the world from a musician's perspective is it's got bigger. Um, there's so many more countries um, that we, you know, in South America we were played in Paraguay. Um, you know, in 10 days time we're in Poland. Uh, you know, it's, we've been to Russia, as, as well as the, normal, the countries, the traditional countries of music like Germany, USA, and Britain. Um, so uh, it, this is, it is an exciting tour of this because we're going to new places. And you mentioned before that the songs that are hits in the West were different here. Well, they weren't on the, there wasn't yeah. the radio here for them to be played on. Yeah. yeah, that's one thing I find interesting is that because uh, pop music from the West was not really here for, in China until very recently, and they're discovering all this music kind of all at the same time, so of course their tastes might be different. So when you were in Shanghai, were any of the... Uh, was the reception to some of your music different than you had expected? Did they like some songs more than others, and what were they? Um, the overall reaction is very good. It's difficult to uh, wear these in ears, and I can't really hear anything. <laughs> and, I, and I don't really see much either, so I'm in a bit of a, a bubble. Um, what was good, though, is that the audience tended to use these iPads, which they were, they were projecting messages to us. And, they had the Union Jack uh, and I flashing so on the iPads. That was my, my awareness of the audience. That's the first time uh, an audience, I've seen an audience do that at one of our concerts. So that's, and also, they had the, the illuminated battles as well. So. Okay. The whole place had a bit of a sort of party atmosphere yeah, well, yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like those too. 
Yeah, I think we could import those into the UK. Well, next time we'll get one of those instead of a plant. I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So could you explain to maybe some people that are watching who don't really know about your music just what kind of style it is? And also back when you started in Chelsea in 81, like what the scene was like there. You know, when you guys were making music for the first time, can you kind of describe the environment and what was happening in your heads? Well, when we first met in 1981, um, we were both into electronic music, which was quite a new thing then. Um, you know, craft work came along in the 70s. And then at that point, you had the biggest group in the world almost with the Human League. Um, who were an electronic band, and then you had Depeche Mode had just started, OMD, um, Soft Cell, um, and that was, you know, a very sort of, that was the sort of cutting edge scene, if you like. And also we liked the music you might hear in clubs. Hip hop music was just starting from America, with artists like Africa, Bambata. We also liked the music of this American New York producer, dance producer called Bobby Orlando. Bobby O. Bobby o, who we met and ended up making our first record with 1983. So what we really wanted to do when we started was to take electronic club music, but also um, kind of blend that with sort of new wave stroke singer-songwriter songwriting. So um, the lyrics were kind of interesting, controversial, personal, um, provocative probably the main, most important thing. And that was what the project was right at the beginning, and probably what the project still is now, actually. What was provocative about the lyrics? Well, you know, we were, um, this was in the early 80s, so it's when the, the Thatcher period in Britain, and like one of our first songs was, I've got the brains, you've got the looks, let's, let's make lots of money. So it was kind of saying what was going on, but doing it with a sort of ironic detachment, as people would say. Um, you know, and then we read, we've written over the years quite a few political songs like that. I read somewhere uh, a quote from you that you said you guys are anti-rock and roll, you, or you don't like rock and roll and rockabilly. Oh, that was that ages true? ago. That was a, <laughs> we've become the epitome of rock and roll. <laughs> no, we have. Just look at our lifestyle. <laughs> well, that's why I wanted to bring plants. it up. <laughs> yeah, you're just willy-nilly <laughs> incinerating rubber <laughs> plants wherever you Food. go. Food. <laughs> It's, well, I'm just curious if you we're feel... Living the, we're living the dream. Well, do you feel now that you've won, in a sense? I mean, it seems like rock and roll is on the way out and electric is in. in the, when, we, when we said that was in the mid-80s and rock music was very, very pompous. Um, a lot of it, not all of it, but a lot of it was. And, um, and we didn't really like the sort of rock posturing. Um, that it doesn't really seem to exist so much now. So it's not a big issue for us. In fact, on our new album, Electric, we've covered a song by Bruce Springsteen. Okay. Called yeah. The Last to Die. But it's an electronic version. But it's elect sounds like, it sounds like the Pet Shop Boys, but it's by Bruce Springsteen. And do you speak any Chinese? I want to teach you one phrase. <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite simple. It's, it's the it name really? of the show in Chinese. Um, right. It's yin, like yin yang. Yeah. Yin, ni, yeah. like like, like the thing that's like, exposed right like now. Like Ni Hao. Patella. I would like call it Patella. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like Ni Hao. Good. Yeah. So Yin, Ni, R, like the letter R. Yes. Yeah. In Ni, R, Yeah. Yin, Ni, R, Yeah. 大家好,你现在收看的是 Yin, Ni, R, Yeah. Thank you very much, Neil. Thank you. <laughs>